Hello students, I am back with another video and this time this video is journey to the end of the earth. This is a travelogue first of all or we can say this is study tour of this narrator and this study tour actually this journey we can say commences on the Russian vehicle and Joff Green was leading to the students and leading where to Antarctica and if we talk about the theme of this chapter so we can say the theme of this chapter is that human action and its effect on our environment so this is the theme means we are we as humans we are maybe just trying to excel in every field but somewhere it is affecting nature in adverse form so this is the theme of the chapter and when we talk about the she is a very very good dancer along with her writing skills yes she is a good dancer but she did not start dancing from the very beginning she spent her initial days out of India but when she came back to India in Madras she met one dancer and then she was so influenced that she started dancing with her and now she is a part of that group led by Chandralekha the dancer and that's why we can say she is now a freelance dancer a freelance writer a freelance columnist so let's start with our chapter journey to the end of the earth early this year I found myself abroad a Russian research vessel the academic Shkualeske so underline this academic Shkualeske and learn the spelling because this is the name of the Russian vessel and you need to write this name somewhere in your question so underline this name and learn it also the academic scholars K heading towards the coldest driest windiest continent in the world Antarctica and this vessel was heading towards Antarctica and according to her this is one of the coldest one of the driest and one of the windiest continent in the world my journey began 13.09 degrees north of the equator underline this you may need to write it again okay so underline this so journey began 13.09 degrees north of the equator in Madras and involved and this involved crossing nine time zones six checkpoints three bodies of water and at least as many ecospheres so this line is really very important why because if you get this question that in what way this title journey to the end of the earth is apt means if you are to talk about the aptness of this title then you will be taking this line first of all for your answer that why it is called she gave the title as journey to the end of the earth in what way end to the earth because she crossed nine time zones six checkpoints three bodies of water and at least as many ecospheres so after crossing this much when she reached and this is what she felt that maybe this was the end of the earth by the time I actually set foot on the Antarctic continent I had been traveling over 100 hours in combination of a car and airplane and a ship so moreover why she felt this is end of the earth because she took or she spent 100 hours in traveling and then she used all the modes car airplane etc so all the modes she used and she traveled for 100 hours she crossed this time nine time zones and then six checkpoints three water bodies so that's why she felt that this was more or less somewhere end of the earth so this is important question title so this way you can answer this question so my first emotion another important question 
what was the first emotion of her when she reached antarctica so my first emotion on facing antarctica's expansive white landscape and uninterrupted blue horizon was relief blue horizon means sky when she reached over there there was only ice and snow all around her so that's why because this is antarctica so that's why it is written expansive white landscape expansive here is expanded means it was expanded everywhere and it was only whiteness around her and then uninterrupted blue sky means because there are no buildings no tall trees so when you look up you can see the sky blue sky there is no interruption so that's this is what she said uninterrupted blue horizon and the emotion was first emotion was of relief followed by an immediate and profound wonder and next emotion was profound too much wonder because it though she already knew that they are going to antarctica antarctica means just snow and ice only but still when she herself saw this area with her own eyes that's why she said it was a wonderful experience wonder surprise over there and why she was surprised at what she was surprised wonder at its immensity too much beauty over there that way that's why its isolation moreover she was feeling wonderful or we can say she was feeling surprised to see this beauty because of this isolation from rest of the world because it is not this area is not like the rest of the world but she was feeling wonderful but at what but mainly at how there could ever be have been a time when india and antarctica were part of the same land mass when she though maybe she might have already read but she went over there and saw antarctica she said i was really surprised to think that how could this be possible that once million years ago once it was india and antarctica it was a part of the same land mass means same land and now it is poles apart now we come to this part of history 650 million years ago a giant amalgamated southern supercontinent gondwana did indeed exist so she is talking about history that she first of all she said that it was the part of same land mass and what was the same land mass this is gondwana so 650 million years ago there was gondwana there existed gondwana and it was super continent because it was the biggest why because it was a single land mass the earth was not divided into countries so that's why this is super continent gondwana did indeed exist centered roughly around the present day antarctica and where this gondwana existed where today we have antarctica roughly this was the area okay for this super continent gondwana things were quite different then and at that time two marks question you may get okay when it was gondwana so what was the difference from present so what was there things were quite different then humans hadn't arrived on the globe scene so at that time it was only land there was no human beings so humans hadn't come and the climate was much warmer though today this area is very very cold but at that time it was much warmer hosting a huge variety of flora and fauna and at that time though humans were not there but even then it was beautiful flora and fauna because humans were not there to disturb so that way also huge variety of flora and fauna for 500 million years gondwana thrived and this way for 500 million years gondwana remained there so it thrived but around the time when dinosaurs were wiped out and the age of the mammals got under way the landmass was forced to separate into countries shaping the globe much as we know it today means earlier for 500 year, years it was just gondwana one supercontinent one single landmass 
but then it started breaking to pieces and it was a time when dinosaurs were gone they were going they were being extincted and then after their extinction human beings started coming so mammals animals came then human beings came and when human beings came then this gondwana was divided into countries and whatever present day picture of world we have it was the picture that became at that time so now it was no more super continent one continent only gondwana rather now it was countries to visit antarctica now is to be a part of that history and that's why she says when you go to antarctica you get to know everything because it was gondwana here so it means when you talk about gondwana it means you talk about that history so you become a part of history to get a grasp of where we have come from so you get to know that you have come from where what was your history and where we could possibly be heading and now it was history when it was variety of flora fauna it was gondwana and now we are divided into countries and now we are trying to be at number 1 and that's why in this mad race to become the super power we are destroying nature so this is where we you get to know where possibly your future will take you it's to understand the significance of cordilleran folds and precambrian granite shields so here only you get to know about the cordilleran mean uh, cordilleran means chains of we can say mountains over there and then precambrian mean rock deposits are also there okay so these are the places where you sometimes see less elevated areas where sometime you see that mountain ranges this is all you uh, get from uh, get a glimpse of history from there and then granite shields ozone and carbon evolution and extinction so this is where you study that how you evolved how people came into being how animals and human beings came on this earth and then how it was a time for extinction of few animals like dinosaurs when you think about all that all that can happen in a million years it can get pretty mind boggling so when you get over there when you get to know about history and do, then you get to know about your future also and it can be mind boggling maybe it is sometime difficult to digest and grasp everything imagine india pushing northwards jamming against asia to buckle its crust means to hit buckle its crust and form the himalayas south america drifting off to join north america opening up the drake passage to create a cold con- circum polar current keeping antarctica frigid desolate and at the bottom of the world so this is how it happened means gondwana broke into pieces and then they were drifting hitting and then himalayas came into existence and this way the countries came into existence and this way the countries kept pushing here and there and this is how today we can say antarctica and india are they are far away from each other i think we can stop here so this much for today and in the next video we will continue from here page number 19 but whatever we have read here please revise it watch the video intently and keep the book in your hand keep pen in your hand and keep underlining all the major points and prepare for your exams thank you